Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 10.7, Elapsed Time. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to convert units of time to solve elapsed time problems. Please pause again to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Let's jump in with the unlock the problem. It says, a computer company claims that its laptop has a battery that lasts four hours. The laptop actually ran for 200 minutes before the battery ran out. Did the battery last four hours? So let's think about if we have one hour, that means that it was 60 minutes. So step one says let's convert our minutes into hours so that we can compare. So if it lasts 200 minutes, that's what they said, if it lasts 200 minutes, then we need to divide that by 60 in order to find out how many hours that was. So 200 divided by 60. So think 60 and 60 would be 120. So four would be too many, so it's gonna be three. Six times three is 18. So let's subtract. Zero minus eight we can't do. 10 minus eight is two. So we are left over that it was three hours and 20 minutes. So our total time was 200 minutes. We divided that by the number of minutes in an hour, which was 60, and we got the answer of three hours and 20 minutes. So now that we know how long it actually lasted, let's see if it says what the company says. The company says that it should last for four hours. Well, we know that three hours and 20 minutes is smaller than four hours. So since three hours and 20 minutes is less than four hours, then the battery did not last as long as the computer company said. So today's lesson is gonna be all about time and converting time. Let's continue on. One of the tricky things about time is that time often has to be used as a mixed measurement. We usually have time as days and weeks and years or minutes and hours and seconds. So let's look at some mixed measurements. Jill spent much of her summer away from home. She spent 10 days with her grandparents, nine days with her cousins, and 22 days at camp. And now we're going to convert how many weeks and if we have leftover days was she away from home. So step one says let's find out how many days that was total. So she had 10 plus 9 plus 22. So that means that she was gone. 9 plus 2 is 11 and 2 plus 2 is 4. So she was away from home for 41 days. Now we need to know how many weeks 41 days is. So we're going to do 41 weeks divided by 7 because that's how many days are in a week. So 41 divided by 7. Well, I know that 7 times 6 is 42, so it must be 7 times 5, which is 35. And then let's subtract to see what's left over. 1 minus 5 we can't do. So 11 minus 5 is 6. So that means that she was gone for 5 whole weeks and 6 days. So Jill was away from home for five weeks and six days. Almost seven whole, six whole weeks, but not quite. Great job, let's keep going. Another tricky part about time is this idea of elapsed time. It means time that has passed. So let's do a problem with time that has already passed. Monica spent two and a half hours working on her computer. If she started at 10.30, what time did she stop? So let's first off break two and a half 
into 1 plus 1 plus 1 half. And then we can split up that time. So if I worked for 1 hour from 10.30 plus an hour, that would be 11.30. And then I worked another hour because she had 2 hours. So 11.30 plus an hour would be 12 30. And then I also worked for a half hour, so 12.30 plus a half hour would give us 1 o'clock. So that means that she stopped working at 1 o'clock. Let's try this another way. We can also do elapsed time on a clock. So if it was 10.30 when she started, this is what the clock looked like at the start. So then her hour hand moved one, two, and a little bit extra. So that means that Monica stopped working at one o'clock. I personally like to use the number line better than the clock, but you decide which way works best for you. Almost finished, fifth graders. Today's lesson activity is the try this section. It says, Robert's soccer team needs to be off the soccer field by 12.15. Each game is at most one and three quarter hours long. What time should the game begin to make sure that the team finishes on time? Well, let's first off think about that fraction, three quarters of an hour. Well, if we have three quarters, let's think about what is one quarter. One quarter would be one fourth of an hour. And if we cut up the clock into fourth size pieces, then one fourth would be 15 minutes. So if we had one fourth and one fourth and one fourth, that would be 45 minutes. It would be three out of four parts. So when we talk about whole numbers and fractions, we always want to deal with our fraction part first. So if he has to be off the field at 1215, let's talk about the fraction part, the minutes, then the hour, because the hour is easy. So if he had 12.15, this is where my clock is, 12.15, we want to know what would be 45 minutes before 12.15. So let's think back three quarters of an hour. So here's a quarter, here's a quarter, and here's a quarter. So 45 minutes earlier would have been 11.30. Minus the hour, because they said an hour and three quarters. So an hour before 10.30, would have, an hour before would be 10.30. So in order to make sure that their game is over, they need to start their game at 10.30. These backwards working problems are pretty tricky, so I did most of the work for you. Make sure you have everything written down. I expect to see it finished at the teacher table. Great job, fifth graders.